Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here to take a look at some new news that was just released for the New Frontier Pass. That's a lot of the word new, but we have some news on the November 2020 DLC. So there's going to be one new Civ, a new game mode, and some other exciting stuff coming out. So if you haven't seen any of these videos, this is just going to be a very casual kind of look and first impressions at some of the stuff that's coming in the next patch. Maybe some theorizing on what we're going to see, but let's go ahead and get right on into things. I'll link this video in the description below as well if you haven't seen it yet, if you want to watch it without me talking over it, but let's go ahead and see what they have to say for November. Hey there Civ fans, welcome to the developer video for DLC 4. We're going to be announcing a new civilization, new game mode, and some of the other new additions you can expect to find while you're taking one more turn in the civilization. So one thing I just want to talk about real fast is, so Babylon was actually, oh, I've just spoiled what the new Civ is, but Babylon is the new Civ. Um, so we are only, there's only two more content drops for the new Frontier Pass. So we have one Civilization, two leaders, so there's going to be an alternate leader for somebody over here. And then over here, we're going to get one Civilization and one leader. So I believe that one of these has been leaked to be Vietnam as well. So... And I believe that Kublai Khan was leaked to be a dual leader of Mongolia slash China. So I think that there's only one more civilization that we don't know what it's going to be just yet. I really hope it's Portugal, but I guess we'll see. And I mean, I guess those those previous leaks could have been wrong, but I believe that a lot of them were fairly reputable. So I would not be surprised if we do see Vietnam in one of these. But yeah, uh, I'm amazed that we've already made it this far through. We are beyond the halfway point of the New Frontier Pass, which is crazy to me because it just feels like it came out yesterday. But anyways, let's go ahead and keep going. Some of the other new additions you can expect to find while you're taking one more turn in the Civilization VI New Frontier Pass. First off, the moment you've all been waiting for, the next Civ is Babylon. Babylon is a Civ we just couldn't bear to leave out. While we're going to let the upcoming First Look video give you all the details, we can say that Babylon is going to be blinding you with science! Sorry for that pause there, I wanted to show that one thing, but uh, yeah, so as we heard from him there, Babylon is obviously going to be a science sieve, and I wanted to show that one combat because it's probably going to be likely that Babylon is going to get combat strength from, or not combat strength, is going to get science from combats uh, equal to the combat strength or maybe something like that. Some multiplier, uh, someone just follow my Twitch, thank you, but e equal to some mul multiplier of uh, the combat strength of the units they kill. So as you can see here, science. whenever they kill this enemy, I think Slinger, whatever that is, they get a uh, science boost and they finish archery. So I would imagine that's very similar to how Gorgo works where she gets culture from killing enemy units based on the enemy units combat strength. Probably going to be a very similar thing for Babylon as well. In addition to, I don't know, who knows what else. We'll find this out very soon in the first look that's probably going to come out either tomorrow or Thursday, I would imagine. Uh, but until then, we'll uh, just have to see what else we get from Babylon. The Babylon pack will also contain a full slate of six new city-states, one of each type, each with its own unique perks, such as unique improvements for suzerains. So we're going to get six new city-states, one of each type, as they just said here, and we're going to get a lot of new improvements. So you can see here, I believe that this is one of the new improvements. I think that this might be as well. I guess some of this could be unique to Babylon. I'm not entirely sure. I also, is this a new building in the holy site, or is this just one of the, the special religious buildings that I just happen to never pick? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't really pay attention to what most of the third ones are, because I almost always take mosques, or I, I pretty much always mosques whenever I play, because uh, they're very good for religion, but this could just be an existing building or maybe not. Um, somebody let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, we have these two things that are going to be new. One of these probably is from a trade city state. I would assume this one, this looks like some sort of market. This looks like maybe some sort of place of worship or something like that. So maybe this is from a faith city state. So we'll have to keep, uh, keep looking out for that. And I know that later on in this video, we do see what one of the new science city states is. So we'll take a look at that when we get there. This pack also introduces 24 new great people. We'll be introducing some familiar names like the poet Rumi and the anthropologist Margaret Mead. So we're going to get 24 new great people, which is quite a few. That's, that's, that's a lot. I mean, the one thing to consider here is that great artists, writers, and musicians will also count towards that 24. as they, They've already mentioned the poet Rumi, so although those are new great people, they're not really any different from any of the other great writers or artists or, mu or musicians. The only thing that really matters is that, you know, the works that they have that you can have have the pleasure of reading whenever you use them. Um, but either way, a lot of new great people is pretty cool. This this Margaret Mead right here sounds pretty decent. Uh, 1,000 science and culture 
on standard speed. I mean, it is in the atomic era, so that's maybe not quite as good, but still a decent, great scientist. The fact that you get culture and science is very nice, but we'll have to see what else we have coming out here. I was trying to look to see if any of the ones were in here. I think, is Schrodinger in the game right now? I don't remember if he is or not, and I, 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 I it's just, you know leaving my head. I think that this guy might be new as well. Not really sure what any of these guys are, but um, either way, we'll just have to wait until the patch notes come out to see what all these new great people are. As well as some less familiar or underrepresented figures we think you'll really enjoy discovering. The Babylon pack also includes another optional topping for your Civilization Sunday, the new game mode Heroes and Legends. This mode introduces legendary figures from a variety of the world's cultural traditions as playable characters in the game. So you can see here, Heroes and Legends is our new game mode, and this one has me pretty excited. I think this one's gonna be gonna be nice and fun. So you can see here, it adds 12 powerful units, uh, hero units from the world's myths and legends. Uh, you get them by influencing city-states, exploring the world, and then you can claim them. So they work similarly, similarly to great people, uh, but they have a lot of different unique powers and abilities, and also a limited lifespan, and so they're around for a set number of turns. After they're gone, though, you can spend some faith to get them back, and as it mentioned, here each of the 12 has their own special powers and a distinct role so let's go ahead and see what some of these heroes and legends are the new heroes are like great people on steroids if great people could be recalled and reborn to be used again and again each hero has their own unique abilities based on stories from myth and history recruiting these heroes can propel your civilization to new heights of prosperity innovation and military might so you can see there they have Hercules here who has a uh, pretty high combat strength based on the period of the game. He's as strong as a swordsman in an era where you would normally have warriors. And he can help you finish some districts a little bit faster. So this should be pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to seeing just how this will influence like the various eras of the game. If they're going to be, you know, heavy towards the ancient and early, you know, just the earlier eras. Or if they are going to be spread about am amongst some of the later eras as well. As with our great people, we'll be featuring some familiar heroes, as well as some names that might be more obscure, depending on where you hail from. One of the most recognizable heroes in the game mode is none other than the legendary knight, wielder of Excalibur, King Arthur himself. His primary ability, Arthur's Accolade, transforms an adjacent military unit into a questing knight, a unique heavy cavalry unit with increased combat strength and greatly increased lifespan. So King Arthur here seems pretty cool. You can see that uh, he has to spend a little bit of lifespan in order to be able to change somebody into a knight. So yeah, uh, so questing knight, a unique cavalry unit with increased combat strength. And t oh, actually, never mind. I'm wrong. Um, it's it's just charge based. So the questing knight itself, uh, sorry, has the shorter lifespan and only has ten turns. But getting that extra combat strength on a unit with uh, for for ten turns can be very good for domination. So I'm really excited to see this. Uh, I think King Arthur sounds pretty fun. Um, he himself is going to be pretty strong, and you can see he lasts for about thirty turns. So it should be plenty enough to at least make him decent for uh, for a quick military conquest or something of that sort with increased combat strength and greatly increased lifespan. Other heroes you may recognize include Hercules, Beowulf, and the Polynesian demigod Maui. Some perhaps less familiar heroes include Himiko, the Japanese shaman queen, Oya, the Yoruba Orisha of storms, death, and rebirth, and the mythical Mayan twins Hunapu and Ishpalanke, who resurrect the enemy land units they slay so they can fight again under your control. I think that these guys sound really cool. They, they they resurrect, as you can see there. Anytime you kill a unit, you resurrect them, and they're under your control. I think that sounds like a really fun sort of sort of legend or hero, whatever these guys are called. So I think that one's going to be a ton of fun to use. It seems like a good few of these are domination-focused, because a lot of them seem to, you know, either get extra combat strength, have unique units, or, you know, the, the one that we saw there just before... Um, allowed them to take control of adjacent units, so seems like a lot of these are domination focused, but uh, I believe that they do show the list later on, so we can hopefully try to see if there are other non-domination ones as well. You can discover heroes as you explore the map, engage in cities. So we have Sun Wukong here as well, which just made me laugh because I, I was I was talking to Dave about how, uh, how how now pretty much Monkey King from Dota is now in Civ as well, so we can we can we can play Monkey King whenever we're playing. In Civ, so you can see here that Sun Wukong is hidden unless adjacent to an enemy unit. So that's like submarines, except obviously on land. 
He has increased lifespan, and it looks like he ignores all-terrain movement penalties, so this is going to be like a very mobile guy, and he's going to go around probably, you know, just acting like a stronger military unit that's harder to see as well, so should be interesting to see how Sun Wukong is. ...state diplomacy, or undertake the Heroic Tales city project in one of your cities. So you can see there, you can either do that by uh, exploring the map, discovering city-states, or by running this special project in one of your cities, which will then allow you to recruit one of the legends. Once you discover a hero with abilities that complement your goals and playstyle, you can recruit them by performing a devotion project at any completed monument. Just Let me go back and look at the list here just to see if there was any ones that I had missed. So we can see we know we're going to get Arthur, Beowulf, uh, those are the Mayan twins, Maui, Mulan, and Sun Wukong. I'm sure there's probably more than that even, but um, so what you get here is whenever you're able to discover them, you choose pretty much whether you want to actually recruit them or not. You don't have to, um, and they are limited. Only one person can have them at a time. So um, if you choose to get someone, I don't know if you're able to choose more than one or if you're only able to get one or what the deal is, but I guess we'll see. Uh, I believe they show a, the, the screen with it later on. We can take a look and see if anybody has recruited more than one. Oh, let me unmute my sound here. Completed monument. Just beware... Other civs might be after the same hero, like world wonders or great people. Oh yeah, so see, you can you can see here that this was claimed uh, by Babylon. So maybe I mean that could possibly be a unique ability of Babylon. Oh, I, actually, wait, never mind, because this one was claimed. These guys were both claimed by Columbia. Um, so if we take a look here, we can see that uh, we're ignoring uh, penalties in woods and rainforest. So it seems like most of these guys are indeed going to be focused on domination because, uh, yeah, Arthur, we've already talked about. Beowulf, he's going to get combat strength bonuses. Hercules, we already know, has pretty high combat strength, and he can uh, finish a district. Uh, Himiko is going to get extra combat strength. So pretty much all of these guys are extra combat strength. I'm not going to go through all of them right now just because I don't want to take 10 million years, but you can pause on this and take a look if you want to read these more in depth. Heroes are unique and can only belong to one civilization each game. The first time a hero dies or expires, they leave behind two heroic relic great works, an epic and a symbolic object. These relics provide buffs throughout the rest of the game. Monuments can display these items in two new heroic relic slots. So that's kind of cool that whenever the the heroes die, they will leave behind two relics, which will give... It looks like this one's just going to give culture and faith as a normal relic, but it did say that they will give unique buffs throughout the game, so... Uh, where was it? So, yeah. So, after Herix is expired or killed, they can be recalled by purchasing them with faith in the city where the monument, where their monument is located. Um, re recalling heroes with their lifespan and action charges is refreshed, but the faith cost to recall them increases with each appearance, and you can only do it one per era. So, that's interesting. That kind of prevents you from just spamming them out if you have a lot of faith. So you, you can only do this one per era, so you have to be at least somewhat careful with how you use your heroes. Lots. In short, the Babylon pack is all about the power of personality. 24 new great people, a slate of legendary heroes, and even Babylon's leader was known for their charisma. Especially if we think of... So does anybody want to try to guess who Babylon's leader is going to be? They were known for their charisma, so... I mean, I, I personally have no idea anything about Babylonian history, but if anybody has any guesses, feel free to put it in the comment section below and we can discuss it. Charisma, as it is in tabletop RPGs, as a kind of force of personality. The DLC for Babylon Pack will be available on November 19th. Civ fans, you are the best fans in gaming. We hope you stay safe, healthy, and happy throughout the coming winter season. We'll see you in December in the video for our next free game update to keep you entertained during the sleet or snow or sunshine or whatever December may bring in your part of the world while you're taking one more turn. So there we go, we're going to get this on November 19th, which is next Thursday, so not this coming, not as in, you know, three days, that's only the 12th, but the week after that, so not too much longer to wait for this, and of course, always coming out on a Thursday as they do, but I'm pretty ex I'm pretty excited for, uh, for this content drop, I think Babylon is hopefully going to be cool, we'll get some more details whenever the first look for them comes out. But I really like the idea of the Heroes and Legends mode. I think that that one sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, especially for domination games, as I imagine, or as, as I was talking about earlier. It doesn't sound like it's going to be all too applicable if you're not going domination, just because it seems like pretty much all of them are combat focused. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe they just showed the combat ones because there's some of the cooler ones or something like that. I don't really know. But either way, some very exciting stuff to look forward to. Let me know what you guys think of this batch in the comment section below. But 
Thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Sax Gamer. If you enjoy the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.